Hey Monarchs, this is Mr. Bryant. Uh, we're going to be doing a quick review of World War II and the Holocaust. For world history students, this is going to be stuff that we've you've seen already in the, lex the lessons over the past few weeks in distance learning. For AP students, this is probably stuff that you have heard about or definitely stuff you read about in AMSCO. Uh, but this is the first time we've really done direct lessons specifically on this topic, not part of like the broader stuff that we learned about. So this, I thought this would be good um, reflection right before we do our on, um, excuse me, right before we do our guest speaker, which is this Thursday on Zoom, not on Google Meet. So that'll be, there'll be a link to that. We're going to try that out today, actually. Um, so hopefully by the time we see this, you've already logged into that to give that a shot. Um, and we're going to be doing that on Thursday. And a quick reminder about that, make sure that you are present, make sure that you are muted, make sure that you're respectful of the guest speakers' time, Rita and Leslie. Rita, who survived the Holocaust, she was never in a concentration camp like the ones you see depicted in these images, but she did um, have to hide with her family from the Nazis during the Holocaust, and many people that she knew and loved, including family members, died or were killed because of it. It's very important that we go into this understanding that, um, but let's get started on the review. Okay, so mini World War II timeline. So in January of 1933, Hitler becomes the Chancellor of Germany. It's an elected position. And so because of that, the, the, um, uh, the people of Germany elected him into that position. It's almost similar to like a prime minister or uh, or like vice presidential role where it's like one step below the main leadership. Uh, but because of that position as chancellor, he's able to slowly take more and more power and eventually becomes the Fuhrer, which is the leader of Germany. Um, in September 1935, legal anti-Semitic laws begin. They're called the Nuremberg Laws. And anti-Semitism, if you guys remember, means anti-Jewish. So there's laws that are made in Germany that are against Jewish people, uh, forbids them from practicing certain aspects of their religion, allows discrimination against Jews, etc. August 1936, we have the Berlin Olympics. You can see images of that here, including Jesse Owens, who is an African-American man uh, who won uh, four gold medals um, right next to him. You have uh, Nazi athletes. You can see lots of people, Hitler, uh, Swast uh, Heil Hitler, Nazi salute. It was very common. And in the Berlin Olympics, Jewish people were not, uh, Jewish people were not at the time permitted to uh, compete athletically. Um, and because of protests from Western nations, there were some, uh, they did temporarily take back a lot of their anti-Jewish laws uh, only to reinstate them after the Olympics because they thought they were going to lose the Olympics. All right. In November of 1938, just a couple years later, is the event called Kristallnacht, which is the Night of Broken Glass. Uh, this is an event where Jewish businesses are attacked uh, by Nazi SA forces and civilians as well also uh, uh, participated. Lots of um, synagogues were burned. Uh, Jewish businesses were um, had their windows smashed. Uh, lots of violence. Uh, lots of German citizens either acted as bystanders and just stood by and watched it happen, or even actively participated by cheering them on or even actually breaking the things as well. You can see right here, there's an image that says Yuda, um, which is like the Jew German word for Jew, uh, with a Star of David, which is a holy symbol in Judaism that's been painted onto the window. Um, in September 1st of 1939, World War II officially begins when Germany invades Poland and violates, uh, eventually violates the uh, Soviet non-aggression pact with Joseph Stalin. Uh, when they push further into Poland and bring Russia into the war as well. December 7th, 1941, Japan attacks Pearl Harbor, which leads to the United States joining the war. And August 1945, the United States drops atomic bombs on Japan in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, um, which official basically puts starts the ball rolling on the end of the war and eventually leads to Japan surrendering. Okay. All right, so Nazi propaganda. Nazis under the leadership of Adolf Hitler... Um, the National Socialist German Workers' Party, or Nazi Party, with Nazi short for national, it's like the German word for national, grew into a mass movement and ruled Germany through totalitarian means from 1933 and 1945. And if you remember, uh, totalitarian means total control, so they have complete control over society. Um, propaganda's purpose uh, was there was information used to influence people's points of opinions and points of view. Um, you can see right here some examples of Nazi... Um, uh, Nazi uh, propaganda. You can always pause it and look at it if you'd like to. Um, this is German students. It says German students fight for Hitler and nation. And again, we have this image of like the Aryan, which is like the Aryan race 
white skin, blonde hair, blue eyes, uh, what Hitler and the Nazis saw as like the perfect, uh, the perfect race. It's like a white supremacist ideal of like the white European, white specifically Northwestern European male. Uh, it says youth serve, serves the Fuhrer. Again, Fuhrer means leader. Um, and you could have like, uh, this is people from the, the Hitler Youth, which is kind of like a, almost like a Nazi Boy Scouts. If you ever seen the movie Jojo Rabbit, that's a, that's, that movie kind of deals with that in a comedic way. Um, two purposes of, not, purposes of Nazi propaganda. One is to create positive images of Hitler and the Nazi party. And two was to create a negative view of those considered to be the enemies, particularly Jewish people. So, uh, again, you can see here, there's an image that says, long live Germany, and has Germany, uh, Hitler raising like a Nazi flag and trying to look very heroic. There's an eagle flying in the background, lots of German soldiers in the back, again, like showing power. Uh, for my AP students, think about how uh, gunpowder empires would build monuments or create artwork that showed uh, their leaders to be great and have divine rights, uh, divine right of kings, that sort of thing. Very similar. Okay. So key terms to understand this time period is vindictive, having or showing a strong or unreasoning di desire for revenge, or and genocide, deliberate and systematic destruction of racial, political, or cultural group. Um, so we have right here, there's an image um, right here of a Nazi, um, Nazi officer or uh, from a concentration camp being um, uh, tortured or interrogated by U.S. soldiers that liberated the camp. You can see actually a concentration camp prisoner holding his little hands down. Let's keep going. Okay. The Holocaust was the systematic state-sponsored persecution and murder of approximately 6 million Jews by the Nazi regime and its collaborators. And the Hebrew word for Holocaust, sometimes called this by survivors and by um, their family, is Shoah, which is a Hebrew for Holocaust. Um, this is, uh, why did Hitler target the Jews? So this is a big question that gets asked a lot. Hitler publicly blamed the Jews for Germany's loss of World War I and the economic depression that it faced because of that. Remember, Deutschmarks became super inflated. It was cost, like, like a stack of Deutschmarks would be worth like basically pennies. Um, Hitler used the Jews as what's called a scapegoat, someone to take the blame for Germany's problems, which included inflation and unemployment. So he would blame them or scapegoated Jewish people for their problems. Okay. Um, the first stage of the Holocaust is persecution, boycotting of Jewish businesses in 1933. Jewish businesses were marked with stars and the windows often attacked. Tens of thousands of Jews were fired from their jobs and banned from universities. Um, this isolated Jewish people socially and economically from German society. They would use the SS, which is the Schusthaufen, or the secret police. Um, they were like a German protection squadron of the army uh, that would go around and basically do directly what the Nazi party wanted them to do. They're like elite special forces, but specifically with the, with the agenda of what the Nazis believed in. So this is an image right here. You can see SS troops, supporters of Hitler's, placed the Jewish Star of David on Jewish businesses. Uh, again, more SS troops demonstrating outside of Jew Jewish business. They're protesting with the signs. <clears throat> okay, second stage is classification, which means to identify people in a, as part of a group. Uh, the Nuremberg Laws, like I said earlier, 1935, a series of anti-Semitic laws that determine German citizenship. Um, a classified society in Germans were mixed blood or Jews. So basically like, were you either German, you were mixed blood, meaning you were partially Christian, partially Jewish, or you were fully Jewish. And there were, um, the German military and government would designate people depending on what their heritage was and depending on their like supposed crimes. They banned marriages and sexual acts between Jews and non-Jews, um, also between people that were gay. Um, and those that classified as Jewish had to wear a yellow star of David. Um, and it would be like on a patch on their clothing, either on their arm or their chest. Um, and think about, I want you to think about why it's classifying who is Jewish important to causing discrimination. And the reason being is that if you discriminate against someone and you put it openly in the public and people know that this type of people, in this case, Jewish people are considered the enemy and they are clearly labeled with a symbol of that, then all of a sudden it's emboldens people to act terribly towards those people and to discriminate against them as well. You can see right here, here's an image of showing one of those patches. 
Um, badges of Hate. Uh, is, this is basically this is an activity I did with World History. Uh, it's gonna be a review for you guys, so keep going through it. But other groups Hitler opposed were forced to wear these badges to signify their position in society. So this is antisocial badges. So people that were considered antisocial, they would like shut-ins, things of that nature, didn't actively participate in society. Um, you have homosexuals, people that were LGBTQ, uh, would have to wear a pink, an upside down pink triangle. They would also sometimes combine the symbols. So here you can see a someone that's Jewish and gay, um, and they're combining those two, the yellow star of David with the pink triangle for a uh, symbol that they use for being gay. And this is actually a symbol, the pink tri upside down pink triangle is a symbol that's been kind of co-opted by LGBTQ movement sometimes as like a way to show like pride uh, as a symbol for pride and things of that nature but it's it has a, its origins as a hate crime and it's a way for them to kind of take that back okay uh we have uh, criminals people that committed crimes against the german state okay third stage is discrimination jewish community de were denied civil rights including the right to own businesses property and the right to vote kristallnacht again i mentioned that before uh he was basically an excuse to go against them and use large, phys large scale physical violence against Jewish Germans. Uh, thousands of Jewish shops and synagogues were destroyed. 30,000 Jews were arrested and sent to ghettos and eventually concentration camps. See an image of a Jewish synagogue here burning. Okay, so here's again the stages of the Holocaust. Persecution, businesses are boycotted. Stage two, classification. Think of the badges of hate, how they would identify them. Stage three, discrimination, denial of rights, crystal knocked. Four, segregation, Jews are sent to the ghettos, which are literally like small uh, neighborhoods or cities that are usually walled off from the rest of society. Um, stage five, deportation, they're deported out of the ghettos and into concentration and death camps. Uh, told they're labor camps and eventually ends up being camps that where they're eventually exterminated or killed. Uh, stage six, which is leads to stage six, extermination, the final solution, which Hitler called basically the killing of all Jewish people in Europe and the use of gas chambers to mass murder people. And in stage seven is liberation. Jews are freed from concentration camps by the Allied forces, by Russians, United States forces, British forces, Canadian forces, etc. go through and uh, free large parts of those camps. Okay, which leads us with the question of how are people punished? Uh, the Allied powers held what's called the Nuremberg Trials, which are a series of court cases to punish those responsible for the Holocaust. Um, we can see uh, the Nazis defended themselves by arguing the concept of Fuhrer Prinzip, which is the idea basically that like, hey, if the Fuhrer told us to do it, we're acting in on behalf of the Fuhrer, uh, we shouldn't be punished for obeying orders. Um, they were afraid to die for disobeying orders, so they would did what the Fuhrer or any other people uh, underneath him asked them to do. However, this argument is seen as not good enough, and soldiers uh, and a precedent is set in court cases uh, having to do with soldiers that they should disobey orders they feel are morally wrong, like disobey orders when it results in you killing civilians, uh, torturing people, things of that nature. The commandant uh, or the commander of Auschwitz, uh, Rudolf Hess, was sentenced to life in prison, and he dies by suicide after the sentencing. It's an image of him and Hitler. Some key terms, uh, this is mostly for the AP students because your lesson involves this today. Discrimination, actions based on prejudice or racist beliefs that result in unfair treatment. Stereotypes, a belief often negative about individual characteristics generalized to all people within that group. And a scapegoat, an individual or group unfairly blamed for problems not of their making. All right, so these are all in your worksheet, AP, but this is basically, these are the answers. So I want you to try it yourself first and then go back and try to do this. Um, but basically you're identifying whether these examples are scapegoats, stereotypes, or discrimination. So a male boss never gives women important work. That's discrimination because he's not treating the women equally to the men in the workplace. The idea that all white people are racist is a stereotype. That's not 100% true. Uh, immigrants are the reason why the U.S. is in debt. That's a scapegoat. You're blaming immigrants for the problems of the United States. Nazis blame Jews for their economic problems after World War I. Again, a scapegoat. Black students are punished more harshly than white students for the same offense. That's an example of discrimination. All Latinos are criminals and rapists. Uh, again, that's like taking the words of Trump, right? But again, it's a stereotype and not true. Uh, you're blaming all Latinos for one thing. Muslim ban is needed due to recent terrorist attacks. This could be both a, stere a stereotype 
uh, sorry, a scapegoat because you're blaming uh, blaming them for the tax and discrimination because you're treating them all unequally. Have a good day, guys.